in this video I am going to talk about what are the different data science projects that you can work on in the field of finance so the first one I'll talk about is a credit scorecard building project which is very popular in the financial service industry it's been in use for many decades now even before the word data science was coined credit scorecard has been in use by this company so what is a credit scorecard well credit scorecard are basically used to assess the credit worthiness of customers the banks and services the financial services company used to find out who could be a good customer or could be a bad customer so based on that they, act, they actually grant loans okay they only grant loans to the potentially good customers they also use them for pricing the uh, customers that are likely to default uh, they are being priced at a much higher rate and use a number of classification techniques such as logistic regression linear discriminant analysis decision tree random forest boosting bagging sbn uh, your neural networks to classify good and bad customers In this sort of project you can go to you just simply do a google search on german uh, credit data you will get this data on google uh, on many other many websites german credit data if you the second project you could try is to build a model to uh, that would that will predict stock price okay so stock return forecasting or stock price forecasting model is one model that you can you can use so these models are used to predict price of a stock or an index for a given period of time whether it's you know short term forecast uh, or long term forecast you can do both use the forecasting model you can download data of stock prices from different publicly listed companies such as apple microsoft facebook google yahoo uh, from you know different sources yahoo finance is a good source google uh, go to bloomberg and get the data from there uh, in india you can get it from nsc uh, bsc's uh, website okay so that's easily available you can use number of uh, techniques you can use time series uh, modeling techniques such as arima ar ma uh, you can also use uh, exponential smoothing to build forecasting model portfolio optimization problem um, so this is used to to sort of find out the optimal uh, weight that you should assign to different you know different assets in a portfolio that means how much asset you should hold from different uh, asset classes one case would be assume you are working as an advisor uh, to high net worth individuals who want to diversify uh, let's say 1 million cash into 20 different stocks so how do you advise him how do you select 20 profitable stocks out of let's say 1000 listed stocks and um, you should also ensure that these 20 stocks that you choose out of 1000 they should be least correlated that means i mean if one of these 20 stocks is doing bad if all of them are correlated then all of them will do bad right so it's always uh, preferred that you know the list of stocks that you are selecting in the portfolio they should be uncorrelated okay so for that you will be using the operation research algorithm um, to find out the optimal uh, weight and and the best set of 20 stocks out of let's say 1000 stocks okay so you can use um, this portfolio optimization algorithms uh, you can use solver uh, in excel or you can write your own optimization routine in, in any of the programming languages uh, in r in 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 sas matlab you already have built in functions you can use them segmentation modeling is another project you can do so financial services are increasingly becoming uh, tailored made right there are different segments of customers and companies uh, banks and financial service companies they are trying their best to you know cater to different segments of customers in a different manner banks and these companies they want a bespoke solution to uh, the problems uh, from different segments okay have many segments like uh, based on gender based on demography based on income based on credit score and so on but you can use data driven techniques to segment your data you can use decision tree clustering to build segmentation model okay so the idea of segmentation model is to classify uh, or segment data and also 
to find out optimal number of segment okay so these two you can do using a segmentation model revenue forecasting most of this company nowadays they want an accurate forecast of their their revenue for quarter two quarter and three quarter from now that's very important for banks actually you know nowadays with the regulations in place you your banks and other financial institutions um, they have to project their revenue uh, and and possibly loss for future and and use your domain knowledge and whatever data you have uh, based on this you know there's different uh, aspects of balance sheet you can even do some kind of forecasting this will be more of a multivariate statistical analysis where you have time series data as well as you have cross-sectional data as well so you can combine both Casting uh, revenues for uh, a quarter or a two, two, th two to three quarter from now. Pricing of financial products. Okay, so this is one of the most sophisticated uh, area of finance, where you are trying to price the products, the financial products that you are selling, whether it's you know a car loan, uh, or a mortgage, or whether products such as uh, you know a derivative products, options swaps future and forward and so on so these products if you're familiar with finance you know these are some of the common products banks deal with so you can use um, you know many of this pricing modeling technique to sort of price this product you know you need not use ml or statistical modeling you need to use a bit of uh, stochastic calculus uh, to you know to develop pricing models uh, nowadays there are also people experimenting with uh, ml techniques to you know price derivatives so we, okay and it's also a new field so you can also contribute you know there isn't much literature on how to use ml to you know uh, price uh, financial products such as future forward options prepayment models so prepayment as you know is like payment paying uh, something before it is due okay this happens mostly in mortgage you know people take money but they pay back uh, or they repay the money uh, loan uh, before it is due and that's a law that's not a good thing for the bank because the bank is not able to make money out of the mortgage that it has lent out to the customer so in those situations bank incurs uh, loss okay so bank uh, what they want to know is they want to know how many customers are going to prepay in the future so that prediction model uh, is something that banks are interested in so prepayment uh, is a big problem for banks because they lose money out of it so for uh, most of these retail products mortgage car loan and you know, personal loan and so on they want to use uh, a predict customer who could potentially prepay so you can build another model just to if some a customer is, is going to prepay or not okay and then you will also so there could be many projects like one project could be chances of chances of uh, prepay uh, the other project could be uh, time time of prepayments if somebody is uh, going to prepay then when exactly he is going to prepay so that could be you can use uh, you know survival analysis here uh, and this could be more of a classification uh, a logistic regression or decision tree that kind of model will 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 uh, do fraud model is one of the most popular model used in banks and most type of financial service company not 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 alone in financial companies in fact anywhere you have now uh, e-commerce transaction happening fraud models are Fraud or anti-money laundering AML models are, are you know heavily being uh, deployed because of cyber crime and, and and these things. So these models are being used to know if a particular transaction, whether it's a credit card transaction, whether it is any transaction that's happening online or offline, is fraudulent. And if that is what is found out, then you know the bank cancels the transaction and you know it it automates it. You don't have to manually uh, sort of intervene into it it gets automated using a classification algorithm and one that has a higher chances of being a fraud 
transaction that gets cancelled automatically you know so you can use and by the way this is very interesting this is interesting project there's so many data on Kaggle on so fraud is one case where you know the percentage of your you know events is is very very less compared to non events you know that's typical case where uh, you will be using uh, the anomaly detection models okay where only a small section of the data is showing the behavior of event okay so in that case you will be using uh, you know more of a classification technique that can handle a low event uh, or event data